Oh, thank you all for being a part of my program here on this Thursday, Thirsty Thursday. NFL football tonight. Uh, hope you enjoy that uh, little contest that will be coming up. This is Dirty Air. My name is Rodney Rodriguez. Very excited to um, be talking with all of you uh, great friends. Thank you for all the messages and, and um you know, emails and everything that, that you guys uh, send me throughout the week. It's always uh, really cool to to hear from you guys around the country. And, and it definitely is a pleasure uh, for me to be able to to get to travel and, and you know, working a lot here in Texas and, and doing things like this, or, you know, whatever, um, is always a really special thing. But it um, I, I definitely wanted to set aside some time this evening as as we get ready to to sign out of here because we we really did we lost one of the most um, in my opinion the most inspirational people that motorsports has ever seen and we lost it, it, not a driver it, it, isn't that the thing that that when we talk about the sport to where the drivers, I've said it for a lot of years, the cars are the stars, you know, because you, you see a really cool looking race car and it's like, oh man, I love that car. Uh, you know, whatever it is. I mean, for me, it's those, you know, old school, um, you know, radical super late models that I grew up watching, you know, at different racetracks or whatever. And it's like, man, uh, that right there, that's that's what it's all about. And, uh, the personalities that you find, you know, with the drivers and, and all of that. I mean, that that, that is very much a, a big part of it. But you know there are other there are other aspects to it and and we lost um we lost Ken Squire last night and Kenley Dean Squire had been had had been battling you know sickness and and some some things you know for some time but if you don't know who Ken Squire is let me tell you who he is this is a guy that it was <laughs> started out as a radio guy. Guy got into uh, radio uh, working for his dad at a radio station at the age of 12. And he went in and, you know, before you know it, he's doing PA at, at racing and at, at racetracks. And then he's promoting racetracks and, and, and doing a bunch of different things. And, and the real, I mean, there are a lot of contributions that Ken Squire had to, to life. I mean, the bottom line is Ken Squire was a just a phenomenal person. Ken Squire was somebody that would help you. Um, he was one of those guys, as the, the longer that he was in the business from the stories that I've been told, if you had an aspiring uh, an aspiring Rodney Rodriguez, you know, if, I, if I'd have had the pleasure to be up north and go ask Mr. Squire to, to possibly be an intern or to somehow learn from him or whatever, he would, he would have let me do it. He would have let me do it. But this is the guy that when you look at NASCAR as it became the mainstream and became the phenomenon that it became. And I know a lot of people now will, will frown upon where, where NASCAR is now. But this was the guy that, I mean, you go back to the wide world of sports broadcasts and so forth and, and, and all of that. And yes, instrument. I mean, he was. He was the man that, I mean, put himself on the sword, put himself on the crucifix to get the 1979 Daytona 500 live, flag to flag on CBS. Got them, them, CBS, to take that risk when they didn't want to do it. And that whole day is just a whole different discussion that you can go to YouTube and, and find different spots about how all of that day happened, how it shouldn't have happened. But how it did happen and how it all worked out, and that is, in my opinion, the day that changed NASCAR. That is the day that made the sport. Um, it's the day that put the sport with the NFL, put it with Major League Baseball. It put it with uh, the NBA, it, 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 even above a lot of those. But Ken Squire, to me, I, you know, I, I've talked about it a lot of times. Grew up a kid going to the racetrack. Um, obviously at some point wanted to be a race car driver, but, you know, was always fascinated with listening to guys talk about races. And there were a lot of folks here in my area that I listened to and, and they were great. Um, but I can go back and, and vividly remember the 1976 Daytona 500 
even in its condensed uh, version uh, back in those days and, and leading up to 1979 and then listening to the 1979 race and listening to the magic that was happening that day. And that magic was Ken Squire because a lot of – I, as my career has gone on, I got to become – a race car announcer. I got to be a PA guy. I got to do thing. I got to do that. That was that my intent. I say it was never my intent to do that, but I think it really was. I mean, I think it really was. I think that that's something that I wanted to do. And you know why? Because I can go back to the times as a very young kid. Remember being a young kid when your brain just absorbs everything, good or bad. I absorbed a hell of a lot of Ken Squire. And listening to how he would paint these pictures of these events. And that's where, when I talk about, you know, doing stuff like this, I'm like, man, I hate doing video. You know why I hate doing video? Because I like painting pictures. And I learned that from listening to years and years of Ken Squire. And as I've learned more and more and more about racing just across the country, um, and I heard this, I heard... um, Dave Moody talking about this uh, today to where it's like NASCAR, the Southern driven sport. But if you really look at uh, the influences that you've had of the folks that have painted the pictures and have been so influential in the broadcast or the TV or the production aspect or radio aspect of what this sport um, has produced, it's those dudes from up north, man. It is those guys from up north. It's Ken Squire. It's Dave Moody. It's Jack Root. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And when you have guys like me, myself, I pattern myself. There's an old saying that they say you you watch the greats and you try to pattern yourselves after them. Ken Squire was the great that I have tried to pattern myself after when I'm doing, you know, race announcing. I mean, just a lot of just a lot of what happens. Just, just just everything. I mean, I mean, whether it be the descriptions of the cars and uh, I mean, um, the whole thing about uh, so and so, you know, from Chemung, New York. I, I mean, j- just that stuff right there telling you, telling you things that I've always said the most imp- the, the most impressive race announcer or broadcaster to me is someone that I turn that on and I'm like, holy shit, I had no idea about that. And Ken Squire was the first one that I remember that. You know, uh, and I mean, you go back and and think about this, man. Motor Racing Network, you will not find, whether it's MRN or my man Doug Rice and his great group over at PRN, you, if you really want to enjoy a race, listen to it on the radio. Listen to it on satellite radio. It can be the shittiest race of them all. But they are going to dress that thing up and they are going to paint that picture for you to where it's like, man... You would think that it is the Kentucky Derby coming down to the end and somebody's going to win by a nose because they painted that well. And all of that was started. I mean, it's Ken Squire. It's Barney Hall. It was these guys that did that. And just description, painting pictures. It is so hard to do that. And, you know, uh, years ago I had a, I'm not going to say his name because he's now a great friend of mine. It was a race that I was uh, I was doing PA out in Kyle, Kyle, Texas. And I get an email from this individual, and he says, you will never be Ken Squire. And my response to him was, is there ever going to be another Ken Squire? No, there's not. There's not going to ever be another Ken Squire. There's only one, and he has never met the man, never had any communication with him. But I can tell you what, he put a stamp into me that each and every time that I crack one of these for racing, whether it's this or on the racetrack, it resonates each and every time, each and every time. He's that damn good. He was that damn good. And he's the best. And he's in a much better place while... It sucks that we don't have him with us. It had been a rough go for him, and he's doing a hell of a lot better than any of us are doing right here on Earth. As we close out 
Dirty Air tonight. Um, I found this on Twitter today. It was a, a tweet from NASCAR man, one of the great, um, just one of the, you know, one of the great uh, folks there on social media that really um, does great things for this sport. The tweet said, Ken Squire is a man, makes stock car racing feel grand, a man who sees it as the beautiful sport that it is and always portrays drivers and mechanics as heroes. Mm-hmm. Is that true? His style of dignity and respect for racing is unmatched. The greatest storyteller ever. And I don't think it was ever more evident than when he says, common men performing uncommon deeds. One of the great squireisms that there ever was. Rest in peace, Mr. Squire. Thank you for the impact that you have had on my career. Thank you for making me want to do this each and every opportunity I get. And we sign out a dirty air right here with a look at the great Ken Squire. From the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina, I'm Ken Squire, and welcome to the night. During this season when the engines are silent, tracks pretty much snowed under, we reflect. We ponder the purpose of our sport, what its gifts are, what it teaches us. There is Victory Lane. Ken Squire is down there. It's Victory Lane, and it is a harmonious group around Bobby Isaac. Delighted to see him here. Fourth time in a row, Bobby. Congratulations on a great run. Well, thank you, Ken, and my car did work real good. He not only made us recognize the drivers, but care about them as people, respect them as athletes, and realize that they were heroes. In our sport, there are innovators, builders, advocates, challengers, heroes, and an announcer now and then, all have a part to play. From a windy Daytona Speedway, I'm Ken Squire, and welcome to America's Great Race. The cars that we park in our dooryards, that we drive to work and play today, take on epic proportion for a purse of nearly $800,000. The drivers of legendary status, men brave enough to take life in their bare hands and deal with it at 200 miles per hour. America wanted heroes, real heroes they could believe in. Why would you want to do something that you know darn well could turn around and bite you, could kill you? I never wanted to do anything else. And Dale Earnhardt is coming out of his car. Never, never doubt that cliche about Dale Earnhardt, one tough customer. Let me tell you about my beginning. Morrisville, Vermont. C.C. Miller's Pasture where uh, old CC had built his own super speedway, and I was the announcer. There were race cars, weekends, daring drivers, dancing with death and danger in every corner, bobtail streamliners. Boy, they take your breath away. I was fully involved. It was a book of marvels for a kid. When future historians write about the wonders of the world, save at least one chapter for this. The world's fastest motor speedway, the Alabama International Motor Speedway here at Talladega, Alabama. Grant Sr. became my big mentor. Motor Racing Network, which Roger Bear and I were favored to get started. Yeah, Bill said he'd give us a place to work. He did. It was a Pepsi Cola cooler, and we had two telephones on top out in the hall. And Bill would show up every hour or so and say, how are you boys coming? We got a lot of stations. Yes, sir. And that was the beginning of MRN. And now from high above the start finish line at Ontario, here is Ken Squire. And a good, good day around the world. Welcome to the fourth run into the California 500. Today, for a first... His idea was to introduce America to those heroes in a bold way by broadcasting NASCAR's biggest race, the Daytona 500, live from start to finish. Chan Squire had the vision that this would work. He also, frankly, very important, he had Bill France's ear. 
Two of the greatest fiddling here, fidgeting with first place. Passing some of the strikes in the last lap. Trying to take it home. It's all come down to this. Out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. Donnie Allison slides. They hit again. They climb into the turn. They're hitting the wall. They're head on the wall. They slide down to the inside. Let's watch those third place cars. They're out of it. Who is going to win it? Richard Petty is now. There's a fight between Kale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. And he's got this legal pad, and it's all it's full. The legal pad was filled with phrases to describe yeah. stock car racing. Put your teeth in your pocketbook, Grandma. This is going to be a rough one. And they begin to shuffle down the back straightaway. It is a two-car joust. And now, moves in to appropriate the lead. Into turn three, he fireballs his way into the lead. Goes out in front by one, two, three car lengths. And look at that Oklahoma land rush back there. Because the gauges begin to roll around and get red and rosy out there. Johnny Utsman hand grenades the engine. It detonates right at the start-finish line. Like bullets, they propel themselves out of the corner. He looked at me and he said, there is no substitute for homework. It was Gene Shepard who wrote, if horse racing was the sport of kings, then auto racing was the sport of friends. Hey, Again? Ken. Just once. Just once. I wish you guys would tell us the real story. Shit. Bobby Allison high, Davy Allison trying the inside move, Bobby Allison holds him off, they come to the strike, and the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison, Davy Allison, his son in second, Judy Allison is static, what a tremendous family performance. Kowicki there, Elliot pulls a little ahead on the outside, driving for the finish, here comes Kowicki up on the bottom of the racetrack, Kowicki going for all of it, they touch! And across the line, it's Elliott. Bill Elliott has done it. Davy Allison first. Morgan Shepard gets it all back there. Has he got anything left? Coming to the strike. Morgan comes to the inside, and Davy Allison is going to win the Daytona 500. In 1965, when this snowbird first flew south to Daytona, Bill France Sr. told us, told me, come the year 2000, this sport will be major league, right up there with baseball and football. Francine, you sure hit it right on the nose. For everyone here at CBS who for 22 years have brought you this American racing classic, brought it into your homes with a sense of dignity and dedication, love and respect, thank you for being part of it. And I hope that you'll take that message along that this sport is so special, so unique, and so beautiful in so many ways.